Hey, what's going on everyone? This is Big Brace. In this tutorial, we're going to build a simple CRUD router application with Vue.js framework for the front-end design and Flask micro framework for the back-end server. Now, the original code was written by Michael Herman from testdriven.io. He is the co-founder slash author of RealPython. He's also a software engineer and educator who builds financial models, writes tech articles, and enjoys teaching computer science. I talked to Michael and he very kindly has agreed that I use his code base in this tutorial because this is what I was looking for in a Flask Vue full stack application as a way of introducing Vue to all of you guys who love Python and work more on the server side. Make sure to check his profile out, his articles and blog posts are simply amazing. He's a very prolific tech writer and I'm pretty sure you will learn a lot from him. He has developed a lot of courses as well. Some of these courses like test-driven development with Python, Flask and Docker, authentication with Flask, React and Docker, and much more. In the description section below, you will find a link to his profile on testdriven.io, as well as his website and his GitHub profile. This is the first view tutorial on the channel, but also this is not a view crash course. Just wanted to make this clear. So if you're familiar with React.js, then view won't look foreign to you. Furthermore, if you know HTML, CSS, and JavaScript, then you will grasp Vue.js in no time. This project is very similar to what we did with Django and React CRUD application, where we have created SPA or single page application, which was a task manager to perform the four main actions, create, read, update, and delete. Technically speaking, we are going to render Vue components in the browser to create our application, so a component in a view file is composed from HTML, CSS and JavaScript all together on the same page. And I will show you that later. So in this project, we're going to do several things. First, we're going to connect our front end UI view application to Flask backend server. Two, we're going to develop a RESTful API with Flask. Three, we're going to use view router to create routes. And finally, we're going to use Bootstrap for some styling and for two models that we're going to create when you click some buttons. So what is Vue? Vue is a progressive open source JavaScript framework for building UI. The word progressive means it's implemented as additional markup to HTML. Basically, it's a template model bound to a data model. Template means HTML and data means JavaScript. Now, if JavaScript or the data model is updated, the browser's HTML is also updated, which means it reacts to the model updates. Vue.js is an example of progressive framework. And Vue is not created by a big company such as Google for Angular or Facebook for React, but it was created by an independent software developer called Evan Yu. And comparable to React and Angular, it's much more approachable and easy to grasp, so beginners can get up and running very quickly. It's also as powerful as React and Angular, so it provides all the features you will need to create modern front-end applications. There are several Vue versions, but the main versions are Vue 2 and Vue 3. And in this tutorial, we will be working with Vue 2. And as you can see, if you will type Vue.js.org, you'll find here on the top, you're browsing the documentation for version 2.x and earlier. Click here for version 3.x documentation. So the default is version 2, and if you want to check out version 3, you can click here above and you will be redirected to version 3 page. So back to Vue 2, if you will hover over Learn and click on Guide, you will get a quick introduction to Vue.js, what it's all about, getting started. So there are a few ways to install Vue.js to your project. But as you can read here, the easiest way to try out Vue.js is using the Hello World example. You can create an index.html file and you can copy the CDN link and you can paste it there. And we can also check out the installation page. So here is the CDN again. You can use CLI, which we're going to use today. All right, so let's get back to the main page. So continue the main page, declarative rendering, which is, in my opinion, the heart of Vue.js. So there it is. At the core of Vue.js is a system that enables us to declaratively render data to the DOM using straightforward template syntax. So as you can see here above, this is the template and this is the script in one page. So the message here you can see in double curly braces and this is very analogous to Django template language or Jinja in Flask where you can plug in here uh, the variables and these variables are set here below in your JavaScript code. So any changes you will do here, Vue will react immediately and re-render it to the DOM. 
And if you will take a look to the Stack Overflow survey for 2020, you will find that Vue.js comes in the third position after ASP.NET Core and React.js. And for the most wanted framework, it comes in the second position after React and above Angular. And Flask comes in the seventh position, okay, which is quite interesting. And in the eighth position as the most loved framework, okay, Django number seven, Spring, Gatsby Express, Vue.js, React, and ASP.NET Core. All right, also it might be a good idea to install Vue.js DevTools if you're working with Chrome browser. You might know React DevTools, but also there is Vue DevTools. It allows you to check out the bugs if there are any bugs and to break your application down if necessary, if you would like to take a closer look to whatever features or functionalities that might cause some troubles. Now let's talk a little bit about Flask. So Flask is a Python micro framework like Pyramid, Bottle or Cherry Pie. And with it, we will build a RESTful API today. I also have a tutorial to show you how to create a RESTful API in Flask in two different ways. And I also have a crash course on Flask. You can check it out if you like. The good thing about micro frameworks like Flask is that we don't have out of the box tools and features like in Django or Turbo Gears. So you will have to build everything manually from scratch, which is a great thing for learning and self-improvement as a developer, in my opinion. As far as the dependencies or the application tools that we're going to use today, Vue version 2, we're going also to use Vue CLI in order to create our Vue project. We're going to use Node. You will need to have Node installed on your machine because we're going to use NPM to install Vue. You will need also to have Flask installed. And of course, you will need to have Python installed on your computer. All right, so enough talking. Let's roll up our sleeves and start by creating our backend server. All right, so I thought before we get started to show you what we're going to be building today, the main application. So it's a very simple CRUD application where we have the four main actions, create, read, update, and delete. So I've created a games library here and I can add a game because I love video games um, and I can add any game. So let's say, for example, that I want to add Assassin's Creed Origins and this is an action type or genre and I didn't play it yet. So I will leave played unchecked and I will click on submit and automatically the game will be added to the bottom of the list. And as you can see here that it's not played yet. Okay, type action or genre action and the title and you can update the game or you can delete the game. So let's say for example that I've actually played Assassin's Creed Origins. So in my library, I want to show that I've played the game already. So I can update it and now it's updated and you can find here an alert telling you that game updated. Okay, you can delete the game. So you can just click on delete and game removed. And in order to make this spa or single page application effective, we're going to send requests from the front end to the back end using Axios. And also we're going to fetch responses from the back end to the front end to the client side. All right, so fasten your seat belts and I hope you will enjoy this tutorial. All right, so let me first go to desktop and I want to create a folder. I will call it Flask View Tutorial. And then I want to create two folders. So the first is backend and the second is frontend. Now let's change directory to backend and I want to activate the virtual environment. I'm going to use PPNV. If you don't have PPNV, you can install it simply by pip install PPNV. And once this installed, you can go ahead and activate um, the virtual environment by typing PPNV shell. Then I'm going to create a file called requirements.txt. I'm going to open that with nano. And we will need Flask and Flask course. So the first dependency that we need is Flask 2.0.1. And the second is Flask, um, Flask course like that 3.0.10. And Flask course is very similar to Django course headers package. It's the same idea. All what it does, it makes cross origin requests, allows other requests from a different protocol, IP address, domain name and port, which is in our case Vue.js to communicate with Flask. So what will happen is Vue.js is going to send requests to Flask backend server. Um, but by default, submission of cookies across different domains is disabled due to security reasons, of course. And that's why we need to define in our code the origin from where will come these requests. All right, so these are the two dependencies that we will need for our Flask project. So let me just 
save the file and exit. And you can go ahead and type ppnv install dash r requirements.txt. And this is going to install the dependencies that we have just defined in our requirements.txt file. All right, and let's create our main.py file. And let's just open that with Visual Studio Code. You can use any text editor that you like. Sometimes I use Vim and Nano, but almost all the time I use Visual Studio Code. Um, the first thing that I want to do is I want to import from Flask. I want to import Flask and JSONify. I also want to import from Flask underscore course to import course. Next, I want to instantiate a Flask application. So app equal to Flask. Next, I want to update the application constantly. So app.config. From underscore object. And again, underscore, underscore name, underscore, underscore. Now we need to enable course or cross origin resource sharing. So we will take course that we have imported from flask underscore course. And in the parameters, we're going to pass the app and we're going to take resources. And these resources will be set to different key value pairs. So the route is going to be set, which has a key of origins. And the value is going to be the local host 8080 or you can leave it open. You can leave the headers to be allowed from any other origin. Okay. Or you can do like this. Okay. Here we have defined the origins to be the local host 8080, which is um, the default port for view allow headers, access control, allow origin. So let's just try it our hello world route. So I'm using the app decorator dot route. And here with a forward slash or an empty route with a method of get. And here we are defining the main function. And the role of app decorator on line 12 is to trigger whatever function comes next. In this case, we want to return hello world. Okay. And below here, if name is equal to main, we will run our app in the development mode where the bug is set to true. Okay, that's it. Let's open our terminal. And let's go ahead and make sure that the virtual environment is activated by typing ppnv shell. So Python main.py. All right, starting on the local host port 5000. Let's click on that. And there you go. All right, so this is the first step. For the moment, I'm okay with Flask. I will leave it for now. And um, let's go ahead and open a new terminal instance. Let's actually maximize this. And we're going to be using Vue CLI to generate a project boilerplate. And later we'll change in that boilerplate, of course, in order to create our own application. So go ahead and type npm install dash G or global installation at view slash CLI. And don't forget, you need to have node installed on your computer in order to use npm. All right, good. Now for the linter, and this is very important. Otherwise, Vue will give you hard time. So you will need to npm install dash dash save dash dev eslint eslint plugin view. Also, if you're using VS Code like me, there are some extensions that you will need to have. So view extension is a must. You will need to install this and enable it. And also you will need to install Prettier. And Prettier is a code formatter for indentation, for code wrapping and so on. Okay, good. Now we have installed Vue and ESLint. Now to create a Vue project, you will need to type Vue create and the name of the project. So Vue create and we're going to call it front end. So you will have front end project inside our front end folder. Okay. Okay, so this is the Vue CLI or command line interface. Um, let's go ahead and manually select features. 
All right, so we have Babel. Uh, we have the linter for matter, that's okay. We also need the router. And that's all, hit enter. We need version two. Use history mode for router, yes. Go ahead and choose ESLint plus prettier. Lint on save, that's okay. So where do you prefer placing config for Babel, ESLint and so on? Let's create package.json file. Save this as a preset for future projects. No, thank you. Now sit back and relax and watch view creating your project. All right, great. View CLI has successfully created our project, which is called front end. So let's change directory to front end and let's run the command npm run serve. Let me just check out something very fast. Okay, so I have the backend folder only opened here in the directory. Um, I think I will need to open a new instance. And I want to open both folders in the same um, directory. So let's open this with Visual Studio Code. Okay, in a new VS Code instance. Meanwhile, this is running in the background. Okay, which I don't think it's a very good idea. Maybe we can disconnect the server here. And let's change directory to front end, the main folder. And let's enter our project, which is called front end. And let's run the command npm run serve. So while this is running in the background, let's take a look to the components of our front end folder. So notice here in the front end folder, we have public folder and we have a source folder. Okay, this is done. Let's open the local host port 8080, which is the default port for view. And there you go, the home page for the Vue.js application. Never mind public for now. This is the most important. So Assets folder is where all your static assets like images and so on are stored. Components, this is where the UI components are stored, obviously. And inside, by default, we have a hello world.view application. And let me show you that very quickly. So as we said before, you will have template, which is the HTML. You will have your JavaScript and you will have your CSS for styling. The three languages in the same page. And again, this is why I think Vue.js is more approachable to beginners who know just HTML, CSS, and JavaScript. They can grasp everything in the framework very quickly. They can read the documentation. It's very clear and um, just it's very intuitive framework. I don't want to say that it's better or worse than React. Angular, I don't know. I never worked with Angular. I worked with React. I've worked a little bit with Vue and I can say easily that Vue is more comfortable to work with than React, right? And this is the declarative rendering. As we said, this message here is being rendered. The original message below is set to string. So if you will change string to, I don't know, integer and you will save, we should have an error now. So let's refresh that. And there you go. We have an error. Error integer is not defined. So router has a file called index.js and this is where the URLs are defined and mapped to the components. All right, so you can find here routes variable, uh, which is set to an array of objects. You have path for home and path for about. So you can see here above that we have imported home from views folder home.view. So if we'll go to views, you'll find home and about, okay? And obviously, if you will click on about, you'll find this message. This is an about page. And we'll change this foo bar baz. We'll save that. It will be re-rendered here. For the hello world, for um, not the hello world, the home. The same thing. So we are exporting the default with the name home components hello world. And we're importing the hello world from components folder, hello world.view. All right, so this is the general structure of views, files, and folders. Um, App.view, I forgot to mention that this is the root component, which is the starting point from which all other components will be rendered. Okay, so you can see here router link to forward slash home, which is default page, about, okay. And this is the router view component. If you will hover over, you'll find here that it's a functional component that renders the matched component from the given path. Components rendered in can also contain its own, which will render components for nested paths. 
And finally, the main.js file, which is the app entry point. This loads and initializes view along with the root component. All right, good. Now we have been introduced briefly to the different files and folders in the view project. Let's make everything simple and let's remove um, the views from the source folder. All right, so go ahead and delete the whole folder. We don't need home and about. And of course, view is going to complain because in app.view, we don't need that. We don't have um, router link to either home or about. And we can also delete this. Okay, and also in index, uh, in index.js, we will delete this from home. We don't need that anymore. Let's delete that. Uh, we don't have this also. And we don't have this as well. So we will leave the routes empty. And in components, I will create a file, I will call it shark, shark.view. And here we'll have the template or the HTML, a div with a paragraph, the message, which will be declaratively rendered through the script. So I will need the JavaScript, go ahead and choose the last one, not the last one, not TypeScript, but JavaScript. So you will export default, we need few things, we need a name. And the name here, I will call it shark. And we need data method. And data method returns the message. And the message I will set it to hello, this is shark. Let's just close that. Okay. So the message is going to be rendered into the DOM through the template. And let's go to the router folder in index.js. And now I want to import shark, right? So we will import shark from components shark.view. And now in the routes, I will need the shark route. So I will create an object. The path, I will set it to shark. Don't forget the forward slash. Okay, because this is a path, this is a route. And also the name is, um, just make it single quotes, shark with a capitalized S. And the component is of course shark. Now, if you will try to access the shark route, you will get the message, hello, this is shark. All right, guys, makes sense. Now to connect the client to the server to send requests and to receive responses, we will need to use Axios. And we have done that several times before if you're a constant viewer of the channels, but we're going to repeat it again. So no worries if this is your first time with us. So go ahead and install Axios in the terminal. Make sure that you are inside your front end project inside the front end folder that we've created in the main Flask view tutorial folder. And we'll say npm install Axios. And now we're installing Axios, our Greek friend who is helping us in sending requests and receiving responses from front to back and from back to front. All right, perfect. Let's close that terminal. And now let's go to our shark.view and we're going to update this. So we're going to import Axios from Axios. And instead of this, hello, this is shark, I'm going to delete that. We're going to leave this empty. And we're going to fetch this message from the backend server from our Flask REST API. So let's go to main.py first. Let's set this route. Okay. And let me just copy this. Here, we'll say shark, the method is get and let's change that here. Um, but before let's change the name of the function or the method, which is the most important thing. And let's say shark. Let's save this. And let's get back to shark.view. And I'm going to define methods. So the methods here are going to be set to get response function. This is a function that I have created to get the response from the back end. And I need first to declare a variable called path. 
And this is the path to Flask, the local host port 5000 route shark. And I'm going to use axios.get. We're going to pass path as an input. Then this returns a promise and we handle promises with dot then. Then I want to take the response. And I'm using error functions. So you will need to be aware of these kind of things, guys, uh, promises, callbacks, error functions, ES6 in general. So console.log, we're going to log the data in that response, just to check out if everything is working okay. And the message is going to be equal to res.data. And in case of any error, we're going to catch it. console.error, and we will console the error. And below here, I'm going to create lifecycle hooks, and it's called created. So there is before create, created, before mount, mounted. Let me just show you very quickly. So all lifecycle hooks automatically have their this context bound to the instance so that you can access data, computed properties and methods. This means you should not use an arrow function to define a lifecycle method. So created is going to be set to an arrow function. And so this is not acceptable. We don't do that. What we do here is to return directly this dot and the name of the method. So get response. Okay, and there are a lot of uh, life cycles. So before create, created, before mount. Okay, called right before the mounting begins, mounted, just like in React, before update, updated, activated, disactivated, before unmount, unmounted, and so on. So a very good YouTuber, his name is Eric. Um, his channel is Program with Eric. He's one of the best YouTubers or programmers who has explained everything in details about Vue. So shout out to Eric, definitely check him out. He has great videos mainly about Vue. He's a full stack developer, a writer and a YouTuber. All right, so let's save this. Let's make sure that our backend server is working. We'll activate the virtual environment. All right, now let's go ahead and run our file python main.py. And this is going to initiate the server. All right, perfect. Uh, let me just try the shark path. Okay, good. It's working here. And in the front end, if I will refresh that, good. Now shark is being retrieved from the back end. Okay, and to prove to you, if I will change in main.py in my server file, if I will change, and I will type here, this is a good shark, and I will save in the front end, if I will refresh, I will get this is a good shark. So this is being retrieved from Flask. Okay, cool. Now Axis is working perfectly. The back end and the front end are set. Let's go ahead now and install Bootstrap. Let me just add a new terminal here. And we'll say, uh, let me just maximize this. So npm install Bootstrap at 4.6.0 dash dash save. All right, perfect. Now let's go ahead and import bootstrap in main.js. So we'll import bootstrap um, slash dist slash CSS slash bootstrap dot CSS. Here we'll say install bootstrap first. So let's go to app.view. Okay, let's just make this a bit smaller. And in the style, I don't need all of that. I just put margin top 60 pixels. 
and I don't need all of that. Okay, let's just, um, I want to make this a little bit smaller. So maybe we'll get back to shark in our main.py file. All right, good. Now let's go to shark.view file. And instead of a paragraph, I will change this to button. Um, just hold on. I'll make this button like that. Okay, I just make this a bit smaller. And that button has a type of button with a class of BTN, BTN primary. Let's save that. Okay, good. Now we are sure that Bootstrap is well installed. All right, perfect. In the next part, we'll start creating our games.view file. Welcome back guys. So the next thing that we need to do is to go to components folder and we need to create a new file called games.view and this is the main file where we'll be working until the end of the tutorial. Then let's add template here. Okay, inside the template we will have a div with a class of container and um, in the paragraph we'll say games library. Okay, let's save that. And then we will need to go to index.js in the router folder to make some uh, modifications. So I will need to import games from components games.view. And I'm going also to add a new object, which will be the new games object in the routes array. So here, uh, the path, we're going to say games. So whenever you will type the local host port 8080 slash games, you will be redirected to the games library, our main application. And the component is called games with a capitalized G. All right, something wrong in the spelling components. Okay, let's save that. And let's go ahead and change the path from shark to games. And there you go, games library. All right, cool, let's get back to games.view. Let me just close this, we don't need that. We don't need index.js anymore. So above the containers class, I want to have another div with a class of Jumbotron. And this is a bootstrap class, of course. And also vertical center. Okay, and let's wrap the whole thing. Okay, good. All right, maybe it's not very clear, but if you can see here, this is white and here is, I don't know, uh, light greenish, maybe, I don't know. So there is, you can see clearly that there is distinction in the colors. And also I want to grab the Bootswatch CDN and I'm going to show you where I got it in a second. Okay, cool. Um, so what you need to do is to type bootswatch cdn. All right, click on that and get below. You'll find all of these are themes that you can use in this application or any other application. It just makes life easier and make you concentrate on the logic part more on the visual part. All right, so this is the sketchy theme that I'm using in this application. And just you click that arrow and you can copy that and you will paste it here. And I will leave the link to that below in the description. Next, I want to have a div with row class. And I will have another div with a class of call column small 12 pixels. All right, let's cut this from here. Then we'll have a horizontal line and a breaking line. Then here, guys, I want to have the alert message. You know that message when you add a game or update or delete a game. Uh, for the moment, we will leave it empty. Just I put a comment here uh, just to remind us that we'll need to work on that later. Then we need a button. Okay, and that button will have 
a type of button with a class of btn btn success and we'll make it small all right and here we'll say add game all right perfect and just let me make this a little bit smaller now let's have a couple of breaking spaces and we want to create a table so that table will have a class of table and table hover and first we will have um, table head so we'll have a table head and we will have a table raw and then I want to have four table header cells okay so table header cells and then we'll say th and this has a scope of column or call uh, just let's make a space here okay and here we'll have our first cell which will be the title then I need genre played and actions okay so here genre played and actions here actually played with a question mark all right good this is the table head we need the table body now so let's have table body then again we need table row and inside the table row we need three table data for the moment we're going to just try it anything doesn't matter but later we will fetch the data here from the back end from flask server so table data will say do re me okay so this is the table data inside our table here and the fourth data which is the actions we will need two buttons so let's have a fourth table data and inside here I will have div with a class of button group and also I will have role of group okay and I need two buttons okay one for the update and one for the delete so just make this a little smaller I hope it's clear for you guys uh, make it like this so I will have a button and this button will have type of button with a class of btn btn let's make it info and also let's make it small btn sm or btn dash sm and inside here we will type update this is the first button let's take this and alt shift down arrow key it will copy the line to one line below all right so let's make this delete and let's change the color from info to danger all right sweet we are set for the moment we have our ui the basic ui is all set now we will need to work on the functionality so what i want to do now is to design the backend restful api in flask for the games and this no doubt will follow the restful design principles okay we will use the basic http verbs get post put and delete and then from the view front end ui we're going to consume the backend api so this is what we're going to do coming up next all right welcome back so what i want to do now is to go to the backend folder to main.py file and i want to start creating my routes i want to start by creating the get route for our games library so here below let me just maximize this for you guys to see better before i do that i will create a games list okay uh, and certainly you can uh hook this with any kind of database system postgresql or mongodb but for the sake of simplicity of this tutorial we're going to hard code our games here okay so i want to create a games list and in that games list i will have different dictionaries or objects so uh, i need a title and the first game let it be 2k21 my favorite video game genre is sports and played we will make it true okay and so on and so forth you can add as many games as you want all right so i'm gonna 
copy this three more times. Here I will change just the game. So evil within. It's a horror game. Um, let's say The Last of Us. And I'm changing some values for the played key here. So let's make this false, um, just to diversify a little bit. And don't forget the separating commas. All right, okay, good. Now we want to add the get route handler. So here, the get route handler. And I want my app the creator dot route as usual slash games and the methods we are using here is going to be get later when we will post I will add post with get as well and we will have a function we will call it all games and we want to return all the games of course in a JSON format and games is going to be set to the games list that we have defined above and status we'll just type success just to give us a little success message that the request is successful all right so let's just make sure that the backend server is working the flask server is working okay good let's go to port 5000 and try to access the games route Okay, perfect. So we have our games here in a JSON format. Now what we need to do is to connect both the back end to the front end in order to fetch all the games from our REST API. So to do that, let me just, uh, this we don't need that. Let's close this one. And let's get back to our front end, our UI, to games.view. All right, and let's add our script this one and then here above I want to import the Axios library so I will say import Axios from Axios we want to return games and we will set it to an empty list or an empty array because we are talking JavaScript now and then we need the methods exactly like we did with the sharks file so methods and here we're going to create our first method and I'm going to call it get games okay get games and we will define the path uh, which will be equal to HTTP colon slash slash local host port 5000 pointing to the games route then axios dot get and I want to get the path and we handle the promises with the dot then and we have our response as an input and we're going to return this dot games and this keyword is the same as self in python and this simply is the games data so whatever the response is going to come we want to access the data which is an axios property dot games all right, so we are bringing the response and we are storing it in this dot games variable. And in case of any error, we are going to catch them. Error and and we will console dot error, whatever the error is. And we will have our lifecycle hooks created. Then I want to return this dot get games. All right, great, but this is not enough. Nothing happened yet because we will need in our template to iterate over the games lists through v4 directive. So we're going to change title, genre, and played. So for the table raw, we're going to use the v4 directive. So it's a simple loop 
It's exactly like you would say for game in games, I want to return everything. So we're going to say v-4 equal to, so for game, comma index in games, that here, colon key is equal to index. Okay, that might look gibberish to you, but let me break it down. So the index value here is used as the key. Okay, and we use the v4 directive to render the list of games. Okay, this is called list rendering. And directives is a way to tell view to do something, not only v4. Um, other directives like vif, vls, von, look it up on the view website, you will have a big list of v directives. And this is the way to start a v directive always by typing v dash and then the keyword. And then we add them to the HTML elements as attributes like this. We also want to plug in here the game.title. And you can see here immediately that the title has changed, only the title. All right. And let's copy this and let's paste it here. And we will change from title to genre save and boom all right let's make this a bit smaller and as far as played this is a bit different so let's just delete me so we will add two spans one if the game is played then we'll display yes else we'll display no and again we are using the v directives this time not v4 but vf and v else let me show you let's type span and this span will have an attribute vf and if the game is played i want to plug in here yes and let's delete all of that and you can see here that these games are played as we have defined them in the back end okay so you have here um true 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 which means yes, yes, yes. All right. Else, so V dash else, simply we will type no. Just a quick point to clarify to you guys. The get games method is called via the created lifecycle hook. Okay. Which fetches the games from the backend endpoint we just created here. All right. So this is how things work. All right, now we need a model to add a new game into our library. Okay, we're going to create two models actually, um, but they will look very similar and I will show you that in a minute. So to create a model, we will need to have the bootstrap view library. And I promise you, this is the last time that we're going to the terminal to install any package. So we'll need to go to the front end folder and we will type npm install bootstrap view at 2.21.2 dash dash save. All right, and hit enter. All right, good. Now let's go ahead and open main.js in order to um, update or enable the bootstrap view library. Okay, so we're going to import it bootstrap view with a capital V from bootstrap dash view. Okay, so this is very important. And below here, we're going to use it. So view dot use bootstrap view okay this way we are telling main.js that we are using a new library called bootstrap view now let's get back to the server let you just uh, save the file here main.js and let's get back to our main.py and now let's create the post handler we're going to add post to the get. So this is actually going to be get and post. But first I need to import request. Okay. In order to send post requests. And you might ask me why we didn't use request before for the get method because the default HTTP method is get. So you don't need to use request for that. By default, the HTTP method is get. All right. But for post, put and delete, we will need request. So here in that array, I'm going to add the post request. The function is going to be the same. And above here, I'm going to declare a variable. I will call it response object. 
and this is equal to a dictionary status success. This is the default response when an HTTP request is successful. And we want to post the data in a JSON format, right? So post data is equal to request.get underscore JSON method. And then I want to append the title, the genre, and whether the game is played or not in the games list, right? So whatever the game that you're going to add here, it's going to be appended to the games list. So we don't need this anymore. And I'm going to append to the games list, the title, which is set to post data dot get and I want to get the title. And I will repeat that three times. So for title, for genre, And in this case, I want to add a message in the response object body saying game added. So response object sub message, there is an error, we don't need a comma here. Okay, so the response object sub message is equal to game added. All right, so in the case of adding a game, this will happen. We will change the title to whatever title you will enter. Likewise for genre and played, and then we'll display game added. I will say if request dot method is equal to post, I want all of that to happen. So there was a missing double quote here and the closing curly brace and parentheses. Okay, so if the request method is equal to post, we're going to append the game that you're entering in the games list. Otherwise, which means that if the request method is equal to get, we are going to get all of the games in the games list. Okay, so the response object, in other words, sub games, oops, is equal to the games list. Okay, and we will return the response object. And don't forget to um, put JSONify method here, wrap it around the response object because we need it in a JSON format, of course. So we don't have the chance now to do it from the UI. We cannot add a game actually, but if you have Postman, you can try it. If you have uh, curl, which I have here in the git bash, what you'll need to type actually is curl dash x post http colon slash slash localhost 5000 games dash d. Then the title, we will set it to a new game, God of War, genre action, and we'll set play to true. Dash h, content type, application JSON, hit enter, failed. Okay, I think we are disconnected from the server. Let me check that very quickly. Yeah, indeed, we were disconnected because of that silly um, mistake of the missing curly braces. All right, let's just open that one more time to make sure that it's open and let's navigate to games. Okay, let's try in the bash one more time and let's hit enter. Message, game added, status success. And if you will refresh your flask, you'll find that the game has been added here below. Now let's get back very quickly to our games.view file. And here we want to add the model so we can add a new game properly, starting with the HTML, of course. Let's just close the Explorer, we don't need it. Uh, just before we add the model, I want to make a very small modification to the games library title here. So uh, to the, in the games library, I don't want it to be a paragraph, so I want to change it to h1 to make it bigger. And then I want to add a bootstrap class. So I want to put the text in the center. I want also the background to be the primary color. And I will change probably the text to white because the background is dark to have contrast. There you go. And I want to have a border radius of 10 pixels. We'll add a style with the border radius is equal to, hmm, let's make it 10 pixels, maybe. 
Uh, oops. Yeah, there you go. This is good. I also want to go below the table, uh, below the table here, and add a footer. And that footer will have a class of background primary, text white color, text center, and we'll say, and we'll say copyright, ampersand copy, semicolon for the copyright symbol, all rights reserved 2021. And we also want to give it some border radius, so style equal to um, border radius to 10 pixels, like in the game library here. All right, so let's go ahead and add the first model here before uh, the last two divs, okay? So let me just type, uh, just make some space. Here we'll say first model. All right, so we're going to use the bootstrap view for that. So B model and the B model will have different attributes here. So we will have, first of all, a reference. And this reference is going to be equal to add game model. And I'm going to explain that in a second. We also will need an ID and this is equal to game dash model. Also, I will need a title and the title here will be add a new game. I want also hide backdrop and hide footer. So simply the bootstrap model will have reference of add game model, ID of game model and a title, then hide backdrop and hide footer. Then we will need B form or bootstrap form. And we will use something called custom validation, where we will add add symbol before submit, because this bootstrap form is essentially made either to submit a new game or for resetting. So we'll say add submit, and the add submit is going to be equal to a method we didn't create yet. I'm going to call this method on submit. And the same thing will go for the reset method. Instead of submit, we are going to reset. Just the R here is capitalized in the method that we're going to create in our JavaScript file or JavaScript code block. And I will give it the width of 100. So class of width 100. Uh, what's going on? What's that? There you go. Then we will need actually to have two form groups and two form inputs for the title and the genre for you to fill. So here we'll have B dash form dash group. So the first form group will have an ID for the form title group because we will need a label for title. Then we will need a form title input to enter the text. And the same thing will go for the genre. So one for the title and one for the genre. Okay, so let's have first ID, which is equal to form title group. Then we want a label and this is equal to title. why there is an error before oh, okay missing slash and then after the label we will have label dash four and the label four is going to be form title input all right so this is as far as the form group so inside the form group actually we will have the form input so let's have b form input so i made it a little bit tidier and then the form input will have an ID of form title input. We'll also have type of text. Then we'll have a view directive, which will be V dash model. Model, not model. Okay. And the V dash model is a view directive used to bind input values back to the state or back to the JavaScript. And if you read the view documentation, you will find that the V model is essentially syntax sugar for updating data on user input events. Okay. So you got here below V model internally uses different properties and emits different events for different input elements. So you got here text and text area elements. You got checkbox and radio buttons and select fields. So V model is going to be equal to add 
game form dot title. And the same thing will repeat it with add game form dot genre. And we'll have a placeholder. We'll say enter game, okay, in the input field. So we'll have the second form group with form genre group, label genre, label for form genre input, then B form input with ID form genre input, exactly the same thing, except that we are changing names from input, uh, from title to genre, excuse me. Then we have a type text, the same thing, V model, the same thing. Required here is essential. So if you will not enter, you will have kind of form validation control. And I will show you that in a minute in the model. If you will try to submit without filling one of both um, input fields, you will have a message telling you that this is mandatory, you will need to fill it. As far as the checkbox, we will have also be form group with an ID of form dash played dash group. Then I want to have a bootstrap form checkbox group. And here again, I will use the V model directive. Uh, so we have used the V model directive in the input for the genre add game form dot genre here add game form dot title. And here will be add game form dot plate. And also I want to have an ID of form checks. And then inside the B form checkbox group, I want to have the actual B form checkbox. And this will have a value of true. Here we'll say played with a question mark. And that's basically it guys. And the last thing don't forget in the model, we want to have the buttons, right? The submit button and the reset button. So here, buttons, submit, and reset. All right, so we'll have button with the type submit and variant we'll set it to primary for the color and we'll say here submit and the same thing for um for the reset and also change the type from submit to reset and let's actually return the add game form so we want to have that add game form set to a dictionary of title genre and played so add game form is going to be set to the title. We will set it to empty string. Second, the genre and played is going to be an empty list. And why played is set to empty list and not string? Because played can be yes and can be no. And now for the second function that we need to create here below. So we have our get games or here we can add a comment get method or get function this is a function actually and below here we will have our second post function so we'll call that function add game and this function will take payload as a parameter and the payload will be set when we're going to create the on submit function so again we will have our path which is the local host port 5000 and also the same thing as here, but instead of get, we will have post and we will add payload next to path. And then we will return this dot get games. Okay, so this is what we're going to do now. So we'll say axios dot get path and payload. And the payload is going to be whatever you will enter and submit. And let's handle the promise. Let me actually... Uh, Take this part, we'll paste that here. And instead of, so we don't need all of that. I want the get gains method. All right, and also in case of any errors, we're going to catch them. And also I want to return this dot get gains. And now I want to have an init for method. And the init form method will play a very important role when we will submit the game or when we will add the game. And this just simply will set the title, the genre and play to the default values, okay, which is empty basically. And then will be called when we'll submit the new game, when you will add a new game. Okay, so this dot add game form dot title. 
Okay, same thing for genre and same thing for played. And of course, for played, we have a list like we said. Now we want to work on the on submit function, which will be fired when you will submit the form successfully. And then I want to prevent the default browser behavior when you will submit. So e dot prevent default. All right, then we want to hide the model when you will submit, of course. So this dot dollar sign refs dot add game model dot hide. We will have a flag here, so we'll set play to false. Um, false. This is JavaScript, not Python. Okay. And now let's have our payload. Well, payload is an object that consists of a bunch of key value pairs. So title, this dot add game form dot title, also for the genre. And we want the played state. Okay, but played is a little bit different. So let's have a condition here. And let's say that if this dot add game form dot played sub zero, then we will set play to true. Now let's use the payload. So this dot add game and we'll pass the payload now. Okay. I'm just getting called when the on submit function is triggered. And also we want to get the initial form. All right, why nothing is being updated? Just hold on guys. Um, uh huh. Okay. What a silly mistake. All right, there you go. Yeah, got me for a minute there. All right, so before we continue, let's actually go to button. And now I want to try the model. So I will add it as a property v dash b dash model dot game dash model. Okay, let's save that. It was just a few seconds to re render. And let's try it. And there you go. All right, so all is good. We have created the submit button, the reset played. Uh, we didn't give these colors. Um, why nothing is changing? Oh, this is not button. This should be B button. Make sure to change that. And I don't want it primary. Actually, I want to be outline info. And this one I wanted outline danger. For the red color, let's save that. Let's refresh the page. Add game and boom, that's better. All right, so make sure that the buttons are uh, bootstrap buttons. Okay. Um, let's continue working on the second method. Now we have on submit and also we need on reset. Take E as event handler and also we'll use the prevent default method in order to prevent the default behavior of the browser. And also I want to hide the model. So this dot um, dollar sign ref dot add game model dot hide. And again, this dot init form. All right, also here, I forgot to. All right, so let's go ahead and try to add a game. Uh, let's say for instance, Pac-Man which is my favorite game, by the way, till now, since I was 10. Um, retro. And I have played that game. Submit. And nothing happened. Why nothing happened? Okay. Add game. Payload. Okay. Uh, Axis dot post not get. I'm sorry, guys. This is post and not get. So yeah, it should work now. Let's try that. Uh, Pac-Man retro and I've played it submit and there it is Pac-Man retro played yes it has been added at the bottom of the list okay perfect um, remember alert message let's go up and fix that so I want to have a condition if the message is shown I want to show that message this is the whole idea 
So we'll have a B alert or a bootstrap alert with variant of success to be um, highlighted in green and a directive of V if and we'll say V if equal to show message and we're going to uh, define that below in the JavaScript part. I want to show the message. All right, let's just make this smaller. Okay, and we're going to plug whatever message here because we'll have different messages, right? We'll have a message telling us that the game is added, updated or deleted. So message will be plugged here. And if we'll go to the script and we'll go above the methods here and we'll set the message as a default value to be empty string. And then in the add game method here, we won't return that message. So don't forget to use this keyword, this dot message to be equal to game added. All right, so this is for message alert. And also I want to set the show message property to true. If we'll go above here, if show message, then we will show that actual message. All right, so we will set this to true. So this dot show message, we will set it to true. I keep forgetting that I'm writing in JavaScript. Okay, so this is to show actual message. So let's try that one more time here. Uh, a game, let's say Detroit become human genre action and I haven't played it yet. Submit. And there it is. Detroit become human and we have our alert message. Perfect. By the way, you can add set time out in order to just not showing constantly the message for two or three seconds, then it disappears. The only thing that it's remaining now is to add in the server the two remaining methods, the put and the delete. But before we do that, I will need to refactor the old games function. So I will need to account for the unique ID when a new game is added. So just above the title, I will have an ID and I will need to import the UUID library or the universal unique identifier. And it's just the Python library that helps us in generating random objects of 128 bits as IDs. Okay, so we're going to import UUID here. Let's get back to our uh, key value pair for the ID and we're going to use the UUID library dot UUID, which generates a UUID from a host ID, sequence number and the current time. And you can see here there is UUID one, three, four and five. So we're going actually to use the UUID four, which generates a random UUID simply. And we'll have it as a hexadecimal number. Okay, add a comma here. So this is the get and post route handler. And here we will have the put and delete route handler app dot route games underscore ID, which will be the unique identifier for each individual game and methods will have put method. Then I will create a function. I will call it single game and single game takes as an input game underscore ID. Okay. And the response object like we did above will be equal to status success. So we can copy this from here. Then we want to check out if request dot method is equal to put. Uh, we will do the same thing as we did here above. And in order to update the game, we will need to remove the game ID first, and then we will add that game. And I'm going to call this method remove game, and it takes game ID as a parameter. And Python is complaining because it can't find this function. We're going to define it now. So we are going to append to the games list everything exactly like here. So we'll take that. 
and then instead of game added it will be game updated and then finally we want to return the response object okay now for the remove game remove the game to update it this is simple so we will define this function remove underscore game and it takes the game id and we will check out in that list if game sub id is equal to game id which is the input so we will loop over the list of games so we'll say for game in games if the game sub id if that game sub id in the games list is equal to game underscore id which is the input the parameter that you enter in the application if both ids are equal we're going to remove that game okay so games dot remove that game and we will return one or true else we will return false all right let's get back to our games dot view and now we're going to add the second model now i'm not going to type the second model i'm going to copy and paste it but basically it's the same as the first model certainly there are major differences um, because this one for a game and the second one is for the updating but they're basically the same idea so we're going to add the second model but let me just add here to avoid confusion end of model one and here start of model two okay and also yeah first model that's okay or just to be consistent start of model one so take a look here b model uh, reference edit game model above it was add game model we have an id of game update model titled update hide backdrop hide footer exactly the same like we did above at submit we will have a function called on submit update and on reset update then again we will have a form group for title um, we will have an input with type text and we'll have v model here which we're going to add in the data in the script below um, also this is required placeholder intertitle okay so basically as i told you it's the same thing all right we'll have two buttons update and cancel and then what i need to do now is go here below and add edit form here so let me just do that edit form and here we'll have an id title genre and played um, let's get back to the update button and I will add VB model dot game dash update dash model at click equal to edit game and we will pass the game this is very important if you will not do this nothing will happen when you will click on the update button so let's get back and create our update game so here we have add game we have um, uh, sorry we have get game we have add game and let's add update game here so this is update game individual game and i'm calling this one update game and it takes payload and the game id as parameters so we will need the path as usual okay but we need an individual game this game id that you will enter as an input we will need to pass it as a subroute to the games we will actually use the backticks the template literals so let's change this to the backticks which is on the upper left side corner of the keyboard so we'll add here a placeholder for the game id whatever game id will enter to update and we'll take axis get path payload and this dot get games let's also return the message this dot message all right and we want to 
show the message. And for error handling, we can copy this safely because it's the same thing. And also I want to handle the update button, which is the edit game. Remember above in the HTML, we have added at edit button, which is right here. This edit game that takes game as an input. So let's get back and create that quickly. So edit game that takes game and returns this dot edit form, set it to game. Now what I want to do is to create on submit update because um, when you will add a game and you will add submit, so add game and submit, this submits the new game. But what about the updated game? That's why we will need a method that looks like this one. So here um, we can say this is for model one to submit new game. And here below I will add my on submit update. Okay. So the name of the function is on submit update and it takes E as event handler the prevent default and also I want to hide the model upon closing and also I will set played as false flag so you see basically they are the same also if this add game form but instead of add game form it will be edit form okay so if this dot edit form dot played sub zero then played will be set to true and then also I want to take the payload and then we will use the update game method here so this dot update game and I will pass the payload this dot edit form dot ID we're going to update the game by the ID all right so let's try to click update and there you go we have worked on the update button we will need to work on the cancel button now so if we'll click here nothing will happen so for the edit form, I need to update the init form actually. So we're setting this dot edit form dot ID to nothing. The same for title, genre and played. And we'll use the init form when we'll create the on cancel update. Uh, reset or cancel doesn't matter really. So here handle the cancel button click. All right, so on reset update. And again, we'll have those four lines. All right. Um, to hide the model, to have the init form, and to get the games. All right, so let's try that out. If we will update this game, for example, 2K21, and I will change the title from 2K21 to 2K22, I will uncheck played, will update. Uh, this is refs, not ref. Okay, also refs. I think I found the problem. This, instead of add game model, it's edit game model. And this is a very good listen, never copy. Okay, um, add game form, it's edit game form. Okay, let's save that. Now let's try to update one more time. 2K21 to 2K22, never played, update, and there you go, updated. All right, last but not least, we will need to work on the delete route. So let's get back to the server. Okay, and we are going to add the delete route with the put route. Okay, so put and delete. All right, and also I wanted to show you uh, here, uh, I didn't show you the ID. Take a look, this is the UUID, this is the hash number, uh, the unique identifier for each game ID. And simply here we'll say if request dot method is equal to delete, I want to remove the game totally and we'll pass the game ID that we are interested in deleting. And we'll have a response object saying game removed. And let's go to the template for a moment and 
uh, modify the button. So I'm going just to add the form validator at click, we will delete the game with the game ID. So at click, we want to create this function. And we'll call it delete game, right? Delete game and it takes game as an input. Okay. So this delete game will need to go below in the script and create it. So we'll have this function called remove game and it takes game ID as an input. This is what we're interested in. And we'll have const path with the backticks HTTP colon slash slash localhost port 5000 or placeholder for the game ID, then axios dot delete, and we're going to delete totally the path, we'll get all the games anyway, after deleting that individual game. And this is the same pattern that we've been following with update with um, posting a new game. Alright, and uh, the last thing here is handling the delete button actually so handle delete maybe it's more realistic or to be more clean to put it here below here handle the delete button so on delete game with a game in input this dot um what was it called remove game okay remove game and we will pass game.id. All right, so let's try, uh, hold on. Um, just the lead game, not on the lead game. Uh, let's take a look just above in the template. Yeah, there you go. The lead game. Okay. All right, so let's delete. Hmm, nothing happens. We forgot to add the ID for each of those items. Right, which is very important. If we want to delete any game. So let's save that. Um, oh, yeah, I see. There is an S here. That's why it doesn't understand. Okay, let's save that. Let's make sure just um, the server is working. Okay, so it's updating fine with the ID numbers, which means that everything is okay. All right, perfect. Uh, I hope that we won't have any more errors. Let's delete. And it's deleting. Perfect. Delete, delete, and delete. I know it was a bit long, but uh, I hope that you have enjoyed this course. So let's have a final look. Let's add a game. Let's add horizon zero dawn genre action and i've played it submit if i want to update evil within horror and survival will update there you go all is good if i want to delete deleted and everything is working as expected uh, thank you very much guys for sticking around until the end of this tutorial. I know it was long, but I hope that you enjoyed it and you have learned how to work with Vue and integrate it with Flask and create a REST API, fetching data from the back end and sending requests from the front end. All right, so thank you very much guys for watching and I will see you in the next video. Take it easy.